The final cars for the St. Mary's Trophy are just moving into position on the grid lineup. Up front, we have Chris Ward on pole position in the Jaguar Mark 1, alongside him Justin Law and another Jaguar Mark 1, and then Fred Shepard in the Ford Thunderbird. And it's Justin Law and Fred Shepard who are really going for the outright combined victory, but we've got the part two of St. Mary's to go. Green flag from the back. St. Mary's underway, the last race in 2023. It's a slow start for Fred Shepard, but he's got a powerful car. He may well come back, even though he didn't get off the line particularly well. Excellent start for Justin Law, but no, it's Chris Ward. Chris Ward, who has the advantage, and the fourth Thunderbird has lost some key places there. Yeah, you can see just got so much wheel spin with the seven litre there, but it's Jack's good oh, ball, and we've got the 30 meter. The Meaden car getting all out of shape on the exit of the first corner. But the Thunderbird is trying to sneak back down the inside through Fordwater and will certainly have the legs and the pace, but maybe he won't be able to find a way through as he has to back off going into the first part of St Mary's. This is a tough one now for Fred Shepard. Oh, we've got a car on the grass as well. Oh, can it come back? Oh, oh bouncing, bouncing. And everyone going to try and avoid it in the background. Oh, I think they've managed to avoid it. <laughs> what a camera shot we got. Let's have a look, trying to work out which car that was. Was that the... Uh... One of the Austins. Yes, uh, it is. Let's see which one it was. We'll check the number <laughs> again. It's side by side with another of them. The 70 car of Harry Naismith on the outside. But it was the grey one that I think that actually went off. Meanwhile, though, the fourth Thunderbird got to get through. If they're going to take the overall victory today, then he needs to get past as quickly as possible. Going on board now with Dickie Meaden. And in fact, the Thunderbird's got past him. So the, the Thunderbird's got past Meaden, but he's still got several positions to try and regain that really didn't go particularly well off the start but we know this Thunderbird is mighty quick in a straight line it's so quick in a straight line as they come round now to complete the lap the gap at the front is nine tenths of a second between Ward and Law oh, and then the Javelin, and Javelin very smoky I'm not sure that's going to last very long I think that hopefully will get safely into the pits yeah, pulled up to the side and that's Dickie, is that Dickie off yeah. on the grass? Yep, yeah, so it's still pretty slippy and it is slippy offline, so if you just run slightly wide and even more so on the grass. Oh, oh. Uh, then we've got that, I think there must be oil down, oh no! Contact made between several Austins there. Oh, that's uh, very disappointing, that's the car Tom Christensen drove so well, number 70, and the other Austin there, that's the Australian version, number 39, Matt Green at the wheel of that one. Oh, I'm so sorry that that happened. Harry Naismith got caught out in that, and I wonder if there is oil down from the Jowett that was uh, smoking away or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I think you could be right, but we're on board with James Colburn. I'm expecting to see a safety car at some point as James is fighting the car now. You can see and gets it, grabs an extra gear. He's uh, got... <laughs> In his sights, he's going to be hunting down quite quickly the, the Meaden car, number 34. So James in the vanguard, of course, as so they come down this long straight. A bit of a stretch of the arms, as you can do, down the very long back straight, and then onto the brakes into a quick corner. So no sign of any yellow, oh, sorry, safety car at least yet. So we'll keep an eye on that just to see what happens. But as you say, the uh, standard vanguard of James Colburn is trying to catch up with Dickie Meaden through the chicane they come always want to try and avoid the barrier if you can it is chris ward who leads this race currently in the mark one jaguar and he's in good position he's done another good lap two seconds his advantage ahead of justin law and right now this is good news for justin law as well because the outright overall combined victory in st mary's might go to him but it depends on what happens with this car of Fred Shepard, who's trying to close up the gap. Number 41, that's Justin Law in second, but he's in a good position right now, but he actually needs to be more than two seconds ahead of the Ford that is uh, in fun running in fourth place. And at the moment, I'm not sure that we're even at that difference as yet. So it still suits the Ford, even though it had a poor start. Meanwhile, here's a lovely little move oh. down the inside. Oh, no, not so good. It goes off. The number six standard vanguard, James Colvin, trying to sort it out. Get it back on. Can he do it? Just about. A rally crossing there. I'm not sure whether he uh, saw, uh, saw that car down the inside. Uh, I think it was well down the inside, wasn't it? We had to catch another replay there as he's had a little trip off. 
and lost a little bit of time, but did a good job not to, to spin the car around because the grass, of course, would be very wet. There's more battles further on up the road. Yeah, I think it was Matt Madison who was uh, in that little battle there with the Austin A40. It's the car that Jimmy Johnson was in uh, yesterday. Number 11 Jaguar there that's headed down. That's Simon Lewis. And it's... Uh, raced under the Lister name back in the 1970s, funnily enough, as sort of partly historic racing already. It's being chased down by uh, Alistair Dyson in the Ford Zephyr, another big machine, sliding away and just about controlling things. But for now, you can see Simon Lewis is holding the position. Yeah, holding it very nicely. And they're weaving around and feathering through the chicane. And you can see the number 105 car, Peter James. Author sold uh, 2.21 million copies, so a very successful author. And we're just going to see the crash in the background. The little BMW oh. there escaped. So it was the spin that sort of set that up. There was a, a, a 55 car spun there. That was the Dyson, and I think that sort of started off a whole train of things for the other cars that were following. Now this was the battle that we saw, the little A40 going through. That was Matt Manderson and the contact that was made with James Colburn, but he did get back on. Yeah, and uh, not surprised that James was maybe a little bit upset with that. He left room, and it was quite a, an aggressive route from Madison down the inside. Yeah. And you can hear from on board there, not a very smooth ride. So from this angle, it didn't look as bad. I mean, well, yeah, actually, I, I take that back. It, it did, so that's why we have replays to see it uh, over again, get another another look and another opinion. So, uh, but they're still going, and there is Madison. Yep. He carries on. Still running. Just, I think the car ran a bit wider than he was expecting it to. It was his uh, mistake, as you say. He ran too wide. I don't think he was expecting it to run so wide. Meanwhile, we've got this boat race going on up near the front. This is for second place. So there's your race leader, the green Jaguar Mark 1. But now we've got a, another Jaguar in there going really well. Number 48, that's Thomas Butterfield. He's caught up. Um, having qualified a little bit further down, but he's now in the mix. And the fourth Thunderbird of Fred Shepard has just set fast his lap. The little BMW going through, but there's a way from Tom Sharp, so I don't know what that's all about. Uh, having a little argument with James Thorpe. Um, I don't know, are they having a good side-by-side? -side? Oh, he nips through, doesn't he? Yeah, he's nipped through. Nice and safely there, the 700cc BMW. I don't think it would quite have the legs to uh, come back down this long straight, but interestingly, Shepard one second quicker than uh, this pack in front. And saying that, look at the BMW, it does have, uh, has closed up the gap there through Ford Water, so I certainly take that back, but then just runs out of a little bit of steam towards St Mary's. Yeah, we saw Colin Turkington in it yesterday, and he loved it, and that's a gain for the Ford Thunderbird. Let's just see his... both of them. Yeah, I was just saying, does he got both? He has, so that's put him into second place, hasn't it? Yeah, but it not for how long for... Oh, so close there to making contact, so a great job by those three for avoiding contact. So the Thunderbird would stamp on the gas and put that seven-litre engine through its paces down the straight. So let's have a look at the replay here, and I'm guessing down the very, very long back straight, uh, Shepard is just going to breeze past. Yeah, it's all about straight line speed. And the rest. They gave him the space, perfectly fair. They couldn't do anything about that. That's down to sheer speed of the uh, very powerful Ford Thunderbird, those big American engines. We think there may be a problem on the BMW. He's backing off. That's a shame for Tom Sharp. Um, this is a, a pity. We'll see coming out the back, the little engine that's in the base, in the back of that, it's a little flat twin based bike engine, oh dear, that's an air inlet, isn't it? Oh no, yeah, it looks like it, and uh, it's uh, in the middle there, the leaders come through, they will, well, I'll say they've avoided, they've gone over the top of it, hopefully it doesn't get flicked up and, and do any damage, I would say there isn't really a gap for the brave marshals to, to run out and grab the piece of debris, but... Uh, Back to, to the lead group then, the gap is at 2.9 seconds, but I don't think it's going to stay that way for too long. There is some traffic that will come into play, uh, but Shepard is setting pur purple sectors at the moment. And what we do know already, Alice, is that if he holds this position, it would be enough for them to take the overall combined victory, because although Chris Ward 
could still win it. Um, they, it, it, it this car that did so well both yesterday and today that could end up taking the overall victory. Ewan Turkson just keeping out of the way there in the Studebaker Golden Hall. That was a car made in Los Angeles, uh, developed back in 1955. Uh, it's not got the same pace as the Ford Thunderbird. This was 1959, so this was a few years later on the American brand of saloon cars that certainly got more rapid. Yeah, it certainly has. The gap has actually stretched up, so Shepard clearly getting some, some traffic later on in that lap because he lost a lot of time in that last sector. There he is on your screen now. So the gap is now 3.8 seconds. They continue to feather past the traffic. Race time left, just over 14 and a half minutes remaining. As uh, wherever you look on, on track, there are uh, close battles going on. Yeah, actually, that's quite interesting. At the back of that little group is Chris Harris. Well, not in the middle, in this sort of blue, little blue Austin A35. Chris Harris is in the middle of that group. Um, yeah, as you say, it's a quite a tight group that we're, that we're watching. Chris Harris is currently running in 13th position. Number one Jaguar, uh, that's Cameron Jackson. So Cameron's running in 11th place. 12th place, we've got the number 22 car of Ben Colburn. That's the Austin A105. That's a sort of the grey colour car. There's Chris Harris, the uh, Top Gear man, a great journalist. And he's having a bit of fun out there in his Austin A35, one of the tiny little cars. Very complete combination of your contrast, I should say, to the Ford Thunderbird. And then this little battle that's going on a bit further down as well. Actually, that's for eighth place. So that's uh, still up there in the top ten. And we've now got the number 55 car of Alistair Dyson. Uh, actually, it's Dolan in the car. It's Dolan in the car uh, in that one. And it's managed to get past James Thorpe in the Austin. Yeah, so that will move Dolan up into P8 as they go down the back straight now. And the battle for the lead has come down ever so slightly, 3.1 seconds now. But Law there, who shared the car with Rob Huff, is sitting in fourth place. And as Ben said, needs to find a little bit of pace if the, we want the battle for, for the overall combined result between the Shepard car that's sitting in, in, in second place. But, uh, the gap seems to, to be stretching, but out in front, Chris Ward is continuing to lead the way. Shepard hunting him down. He's gained, actually, in the first sector this lap, four tenths of a second on Ward. So they haven't actually got that much traffic. Maybe a little bit further up the road, but uh, this seems, for them, it'll be a, a finally a clear lap. OK, yeah, so let's get another comparison on the lap times, as you say. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see because Chris Ward has done a fantastic job so far. We've got another Jaguar little tussle going on here. Um, but Simon Lewis in the white car. He's now under a bit of pressure from Cameron Jackson. Cameron uh, is a very rapid driver in single seat, little single seaters uh, as well. But he's enjoying himself in the Jaguar. It must feel very, very different to some of the cars he's raced. But that's what we love seeing about historic race. Oh, well, he does put a wheel on the grass. Um, but he gets away with it. Actually, doesn't get into a big slide. And he's keeping the pressure on Simon Lewis. Is there a chance to get alongside? Or is he going to wait for the straight? He's going to have a little look, is he now? I think a right, correct decision to wait to the straight. Is he going to go down the inside? It does then bend to the right slightly. We're going to have a tra drag race of drags down the, the back straight. Who's going to have the smoothest gear changes? And then coming up a little bit further behind is the number 35 of, of Chris Harris. Yeah, that's right. So he's joining in. That 11 car has got good straight line speed, doesn't it? Simon Lewis got down the straight very effectively. But now Cameron Jackson, who's a Formula Junior champion in 2020 in a Brabham BT2. Uh, he's uh, also won the historic Formula 4 championship in the past as well, a classic Formula 4 champion. So as I say, he's used to a little single seaters, but he's doing a good job in this Jaguar. I'm not sure it's got quite the engine power of some of its rival cars, but he's having a go at it. Certainly is having a go, and Simon Lewis's concentration on that his face is strong as around uh, the outside. Unfortunately, though, he loses two positions and uh, has dropped down a couple of spots now, but really nice stuff from, uh, from everyone racing on track, and Jackson and Harris. He's pulled off. Up. He's pulled off. Simon Lewis has pulled off on the inside there. 
So I don't know what went, because uh, he was quick down the straight, but he's pulled off down the inside. Yeah, there you are. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Car of Boston going through. Oh, oh no! Oh dear! And he just made a good move. Oh, stay off the barrier! Oh, oh. We didn't quite see where it went at the end. There is quite a lot of runoff there, but... I yeah, think, I think he's... Oh, he has damaged the back. Look, it has made contact. A little bit. Oh no, I don't think it did there. But maybe that damage was already there. Yeah, maybe that, that damage was was there like you said Marshall straight over checking driver out all okay just be really disappointed I was going to say that's a really good brave move there and uh, unfortunately was, wasn't able to slow it down enough was he and we actually saw something similar from Jensen there didn't we he went down the inside and wasn't able to slow it down uh, this again, then. there we go oh it's the number seven thinks please spin the opposite direction that's Duncan Pitaway in the number seven car at, oh this is uh, giving it a good push to make sure we don't have a safety car and uh, the car is out of the way, and that is the number 105 car there. Great race, actually, the Riley 1.5 uh, was the one that hit the barrier just then. So, OK, now this is the, the battle that's still going on in this race for third position between the number 48 car there of Thomas Butterfield. So that's holding on to third just by a tiny margin from Justin Lee. Lead Law. change. We have the ah, uh, lead yes. change there. So... Uh, We'll have to have a look where that was. We're getting a word in our ear that it might to you shortly. So uh, Shepard now has launched himself into the lead and already has a gap of 1.2 seconds. So, yes, the Shepard managing to find a way past Chris Wall. We'll try and look back to find out how he did it. Um, but he's got a little advantage already now over Chris Wall. There's the man who's been leading this race from the beginning. Very good start, but he doesn't have the straight line speed. He's very quick through the corners. But uh, Fred's quick everywhere. He's in the lead. Last lap was 1.2 seconds, but it's putting good pace together. And I think he's going to further extend that. We've got seven and a half minutes still to go in this final race of the weekend. And I think he's going to put on a little bit of a display for us now that he's got out in front. Yeah, uh, always ever getting it sideways. A big, big car there. So uh, Chris will be obviously disappointed to losing that place. Blue flag. Nice. Now, that, that's interesting. Was he... I didn't see any yellows out from the marshals. He may just have been saying, OK, if you're going to pass, go this side. Um, yeah. Sometimes the driver will put a hand up if they see a yellow and will lift. But I'm not sure there were any yellows out. So I don't know whether maybe Chris Ward's got a bit of a problem. His, his last lap was a 137.3. Right. Um, and he was in the one th third. is back on again. Almost side by side. Oh no! And onto the grass goes Thomas. Thomas Buff Butterfield. Oh. Oh. That has not worked out for him, and he's certainly lost that third place. Justin Law's got it back. Is there damage underneath? Oh, I think there is. He's not only just lost third place, there's bits of the car underneath there that have been scattered all over the grass. Certainly some damage underneath that car. It would have been a lot easier if the grass was dry to be. Yeah, yeah, just down the inside. I don't think there was any contact made. But the number 48 of Butterfield thought, well, I'm going to try and hang it out round the outside. Oh, and, uh, it was just a bit too snippy to, to, do, so, to do so. And uh, he ran off ran off wide. Well, let's see, he may still keep going. It was just a little bit of debris that's come off the car, but I'm not sure it will have damaged it. Uh, oh, it's a bit of smoke. But let's keep an eye on it. He may stay, be able to stay out there, but that, there wasn't anything done wrong there. But he just tried to carry a little too much speed, and the car ran out of space and onto the grass. And now Chris Ward has uh, set his personal best lap of the race, so uh, I'm not sure if he's got a problem that's coming and going or, or, or what's going on, but the the gap is uh, two seconds now, and the gap is uh, stretched a little bit, of course, from the final podium positions as well, as uh, that gap might be uh, closed down ever so slightly. Yeah, he doesn't seem too far away from Fred Shepard. Um, as you say, it was 2.0 seconds when they came across the line last time. Sort of similar at this stage. Uh, if the car is working well, despite that one slow lap, maybe there's a chance to come back. But I think the fourth Thunderbird is just in such a good zone at the moment. It's going to be tough. Peter James in the red Jaguar Mark 1 there, having a nice little battle further down the order. This is in, uh, He's in 15th position and busily chasing after the number 26 of Kerry Michael as well. That, actually, the Ford Zodiac just being passed, I think. Uh, uh, Kerry Michael just being passed anyway. And just up ahead of them is the 
uh, Peter James's putt was a little bit of a slide, managing to source it all out again. That's uh, Theo Pafitas, who uh, the man from Dragon's Den, who also loves his racing, of course. He's a great car collector. He's out there racing at Goodwood. And uh, that was a lovely slide that he managed to sort. Yeah, he uh, was to try and make sure he stays out of the way because there's a lot of traffic around at the moment. Yeah, so the Ford Thunderbird is still in traffic as Chris tries to come through and take advantage, but you've got to be careful. And, and it's hard when you're the driver coming through the traffic because a lot of the time the, the back markers are having their own race. They, they may not have seen the, the, the blue flag, they may have seen the blue flag, but they don't want to lose time themselves. So uh, and you've got to try and make the decision of which way they'll go. But Chris Ward now, he's right on the back of Shepherd, and uh, just in front of them is the lap car now with Peter James. So are they both going to go to the same side? But one way, then the other through the gap. And uh, Chris Ward is trying to follow that path in the same way. They've still got another car to lap just ahead. And the two leaders cross the line at half a second gap. So it really has changed on this lap because of the traffic. And here's a big chance. Chris Ward's trying to get back alongside. Fred sees it. They're free of press as they go down towards Ford Water. And Chris has sneaked them front again. Yeah, and I can hear the crowd outside cheering and waving them all on. Really great close racing, and the traffic has played a big part. So back through now is Chris Wall, but how long for? Because that Thunderbird is so fast and will have the speed, but there is even more traffic up ahead. So uh, Chris Wall will know he's got to get a really good exit out of the van corner now to head down the very long straight, but I think doesn't matter how good an exit he gets, the seven litre Thunderbird is going to be very hard to keep behind. Let's have a look, see what happens. They'll be going on to their last lap after this one. So this is the penultimate lap with a minute and 20 seconds still to go. Here comes the Ford getting closer, but he, he's not going to be close enough to attack. And this time, it's not so easy. Now, it was odd. It looked like something had happened when he put his hand up. Uh, oh, he's quite wide, but he cuts it back. That's beautifully done, actually, that into Woodcut. That's very stylish. He's got into that corner to carry the speed. But now he's got the problem. Yeah, he's got the problem now. The tables have turned. He's got the number seven car in front of him. That is Duncan Pitaway, who's waving them through, keeping out of the way. And the Thunderbirds go charging down the straight. Is he going to have a little look down the inside? No, thinks better of it. There is more traffic further up the road, but we are on the last lap. It's Chris Harris who's up ahead of them. So this is going to be interesting. He's in the little Austin. He's running in 11th place. Whoa, big slide there for Fred. This is going all the way to the flag, I think, although he's going to have a go to try and come through. No, that was where the pass was done last time, but he doesn't quite make it. The traffic could make a difference, but Chris Harris keeps well out of the way. Yeah, Chris uh, in the little car. Look at the size difference between the two cars, and there's definitely a size difference in the engine as well. He's got a little bit of a gap now, has Ward. Can he keep up the momentum? Oh, he just he is dragging this car. He is trying to claw every piece of speed out of it as he can as he goes so close to the exit there of the grass through St Mary's and now the charge down the straight. Can the Thunderbird overtake with all its power charge down Chris Ward? This is it, the final straight run. They're coming up to the checkered flag in the final corners. The Ford Thunderbird is closing up, closing up, closing up on Chris Ward. But Chris, we know, could break as late as anybody going into Woodcut. He's still got control. As long as he doesn't run too high, I think he can hold on. Unless he makes a mistake at the chicane, surely he's going to take the victory ahead of the Ford. Into the chicane they come. Look at the power. But it's a long run down to the line, Ben. It's a long run. I think the Thunderbird going to do it. Oh, he's had to back off, and it is the Ford Thunderbird, as you say. We've seen this so many times coming out of the chicane. Has he run out of fuel? I don't know. But suddenly, he's lost uh, so much time. Oh, no. And also off uh, the car that was running so well, Justin Law. Oh, my goodness. I uh, hope everything's okay there. I don't know whether there was contact. Uh, but no, I, don't, I have no idea. This is separate, of course. This is Ford, who's just pulled off. Driver out, okay. 